you're listening to the Telltale Channel. Don't forget to check me out on all social media, Patreon, Twitter, Teespring, and Etsy. All links can be found in the description or on my website, telltaleatheist.com. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming. I just need to fix my color thing here. Give me one second. Okay, I think I'm good now. Awesome. All right. How's it going? Everybody doing okay? We got an interesting show tonight. I will I'll just jump right into it so you guys don't have to wait around wondering. We are going to be talking about somebody talking about me talking about Robin Bullock. I know it's getting a little meta up in this piece, but it's going to be interesting, I promise. Take a look at this. Uh, hang on. <clears throat> okay, sweet. So this guy is Drew Bloom 34 okay? Uh, we're going to be playing Super Mario World while we talk about this also, as you can see. Uh, Drew Bloom is a Christian YouTuber, apparently. Had not heard of him until Hemant Mehta sent me a link to this video. Well, this Christian YouTuber was reacting to my video talking about Robin Bullock. Uh, and it didn't go as I would be willing to bet that you expected it to go. Um, give me a second because I'm obviously dealing with a weird green screen thing still. Hang on. Okay, that'll do, I suppose. Just wanted to cut that out. Anyway. Oh, boy, is this interesting. So, yeah, buckle up, strap in. Oh, by the by, I don't know if you guys follow me on Twitter, but, oh, my God, I have a tweet going viral right now. And I don't want to tweet anything else because I want it to stay right at the top. So I've been totally silent all day on Twitter. <laughs> it's got 2.6 million views in 24 hours. That is heckin' batty. Um, I, I've never ever in my life had any video or tweet or any social media, anything at all, go up that quickly. I mean, I've had views reach the millions on videos, but not that fast. That's nuts. So anyway, that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, go check it out if you want. It's, uh, you strapped on. Okay, that's good news, Soul Seeker. I see you're strapped on and ready to go. <laughs> All right, well, I'll tell you what, uh, enough talking about my tweet or the twit in general. Why don't we play some Mario while we talk about Drew Bloom? All right, so just give you a little bit of a lead up to what he's going to say here. Um, this is Drew Bloom, a Christian YouTuber. And he decided to watch my video that I did on Robin Bullock talk about the, the whole thing from a Christian perspective, basically. So let's hear a Christian perspective on me. Let's hear a Christian perspective on an atheist perspective on a false prophet. All right, let's watch. Oh, and by the by, link to this video is in the description. Uh, Drew Bloom was charitable when talking about this, so I appreciate that, Drew. Um, I don't know that my audience would be particularly interested in what you have to say. I don't know. Um, maybe. So if you find that interesting, then check him out. All right. All right, but what I'm going to show you is cringe, and actually some of this might be a little bit controversial. Some of you might not understand. I was, I actually, I actually have been looking at producing a video on Robin Bullock for some time. And I'm not kidding you. When, when I, I have like five videos that are complete, that are in the uh, on deck circle. And I'm not kidding when I tell you the Lord has forbade me from posting them. I don't know why. It just doesn't feel right. Now, did God come to me and say, Thus saith the Lord, you shall... No. But discerning in prayer, I'll make a video and then I'll pray about it. Right? I don't want to just jump in. Because, again, we're not supposed to be doing things from our own vain... We're not supposed to be speaking things from our own vain imaginations. We're not supposed to be doing things of our own accord. It's take it to the Lord and make sure that 
it's approved. I want approval from God. And for some reason, I just haven't released him. And then I saw Bama did a, a video today, which was shocking. <laughs> but so then as I prayed about this, uh, okay, he's talking a lot. I don't know what he's going on. about. I thought I cut this part out. All right, let's listen here. I came across a, a channel and, and please listen to my explanation as I show you this. Will do, buckaroo. Um, some of you might know this guy. Whoops, I'm going the wrong way here. Now, this is a channel called Telltale. And, uh, you know, I've been thinking about rebranding, actually, in all seriousness. I'm not sure what I'd rebrand to, but I feel like I would want to make it like instead of Telltale, it, it sounds like a YouTube channel name. I'd want to make it sound more like an organization name, like Right Wing Watch is an organization name, right? Um the Friendly Atheist is very much a YouTube name, although it's not just a YouTube channel. Um, I don't know. I, I'm just trying to come up with like a, a better name. I'm not even convinced that I'm going to switch it, but it's just kind of knocking around the old noggin at the moment. By the way, this is not an attack on his channel. This this man is a professing atheist. He is an he is a atheist who makes fun of the false prophets. Well, I guess, yeah, I mean, I guess I kind of make fun of, I tend to not mock people. I try to be a little higher brow than that. Uh, and I don't know that I'd use the term professing atheist, because that implies that I have like a belief, but you know, that's just kind of grasping at straws. So, And um, I came, I, I didn't know who he was. It, like This popped into my feed, I think because I've been doing so much research on Robin Pollock. So I watched this video and it was cringe. And so why am I showing you a picture? I'm sorry, why am I showing you video clips from an atheist? Well, I when I started to watch this, I said, wow, this is what atheists, uh, maybe not all of them, but the majority think that Christianity is. They, they, uh, I'm gonna show you today clips, maybe the best way to say it is viewed through the eyes of atheists. Okay, if you guys don't know who Robin Bullock is, uh, l let me just, I'll, I'll just give you basic terms, okay? Guy claims to be a prophet of God. He's a televangelist. He's got a TV show. He's super famous, like lots and lots and lots of followers, okay? Um, and he claimed to have received divine prophecy from the Lord that said, that, I mean, God told him, that Donald Trump is going to win the 2020 election. Now, obviously, he didn't receive that divine message. I feel confident saying that. But, you know, he kind of lost his mind when people started calling him out on that and saying, you know, if God really did tell you that, then why isn't Trump president? He, like, got really upset and started throwing a fit. And you'll see the fit he threw in a minute. He, he shows it in his video here. Video clips of Robin Bullock as viewed through the eyes of atheists. Why? Well, because if you look at uh, this gentleman's channel, he's got 345,000 subscri uh, subscribers. If you go to his about section, he has reached almost 70 million people. I deeply, deeply cringe anytime somebody toots my horn for me. I can't stand it, dude. I... And I don't like tooting my own horn anyways, or some people prefer the term puffing my own petticoat. I just don't like it. I don't like it. I appreciate the sentiment, though. Thank you for puffing my petticoat for me. Uh, with all of his videos in his library, pretty much what he does, and again, this is not an attack on him. Uh, what he does is he picks out fruitcakes like Cat Kerr, Hank Kuhneman, and Robin Bullock. And uh, does he make fun of him? Yes. But what happens is the damage that he's doing, in, 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 I'll give you the difference. In other words, so like if I come on and mock a false prophet, it's with the intention of, of getting the believer to come away from the false prophets and back into the truth of Jesus Christ as found in Holy Scripture. When the atheists do it, they lump all Christians together, whether indirectly or directly, um, many. 
I very specifically and intentionally do not lump all Christians together. I understand that there are a lot of Christians out there who are reasonable people, not nutcases, uh, just pretty chill, and just want to, you know, worship Jesus in their own little corner over there and not, like, try to steal elections and worship Donald Trump and, and you know, go completely not and hang gays and stuff. Like, I, I understand that they're not all like that. And I also understand that it, it is not possible to defeat Christian nationalism and Christian extremism without the help of Christians. It's not possible to do. So I, I very intentionally... I, I get that the dude was talking about, like, you know, he he doesn't know anything about me. Like, he doesn't watch my channel or whatever. So I understand why he was assuming this about me. It makes sense. But I, I very intentionally do not attack Christians or Christianity, you know, generally. My main focus is extremism. Always has been, always will be. But anyway, let's keep listening. Thousands and millions of views later most of the listeners will conclude that all Christians are just nuts because of the likes of people like Robin Bullock. Not all Christians. Not all Christians are like this. In fact, I would say the majority of Christians in the U.S. are not like this. Uh, it's just 30 to 35 percent of the Christians in the U.S. are like this, unfortunately. Or let me rephrase. Maybe 30 to 35% of the U.S. population is like this, unfortunately. And I say that because 25% of the U.S. identifies as evangelical, which is what Robin Bullock is. And another 20 or so percent identify as Catholic. Now, not all Catholics are nutcases. Um... But, you know, a good portion of them are a little over the top. So I would cut, uh, you know, I would go right down the middle and say all evangelicals, by definition, they are like very, they're fundamentalists. By definition, they're fundamentalists, right? 25% uh, of the U.S. plus an additional maybe 10% of the U.S., um, you know, if 20% of the U.S. is Catholic, maybe 10%, half those Catholics are not cases. Maybe even less than that. I don't know. But I would say 30% of the U.S. is completely nutty. Um, that's kind of the way that I see it currently. And so what maybe many of you didn't know that this type of stuff was out there, but I thought it important to... to, to Play a couple of clips so you can see what the atheists uh, or atheists are doing. This is just one of many channels that does this. So you can see and really feel in real time the cringe and embarrassment of what these false prophets are doing. Because make no mistake, the false prophets are wrecking the faith, shipwrecking the faith of an untold millions. And this is... I have to agree that, you know, the, the, the false prophets, Robin Bullock, Kent Christmas, and, and Greg Locke and all of them, they're definitely making Christianity look bad, like real bad. Um, and if I were a Christian, I would absolutely be complaining about it too, just like this guy is, 100%. The damage that false prophets do, this is, and you're going to feel that today. So why am I doing this? Well... Look at what the, uh, through the eyes of an atheist, and try to imagine the reactions of the followers of these atheists. And again, not an attack on him. I want to, because um, when you see these things, they are cringe, and you'll see why exactly people like this are doing this. So I'm going to start this. Uh, we're just going to play a couple of clips, and then as I finish up that, we're going to read about Elijah today and why Elijah was so epic and truthful. Um, let me just check the chat room to make sure in the chat room as he's talking about like i know i don't have it pulled up here but while he's talking about my channel i find this super interesting the chat room was saying stuff like 
oh, those numbers are padded, it's mostly bots, and it's, you know, fake, and all this stuff, because I have to imagine that they assumed that he was about to talk shit about me. Of course, it turns out that he wasn't going to talk shit about me, which I appreciate. Uh, but isn't it interesting where they where people tend to go into defense mode automatically uh, when they think that they're, you know, when they think that somebody is about to come in and disagree with them on something or when they feel like somebody is diametrically opposed to their like political or religious beliefs, they automatically assume that this person is faking or evil or it's just right out of the gate with uncharitability uh kind of interesting how that works anyway everything's going good okay so i want you to listen to this first clip and i'm and we're just going to roll through this and this might take about 30 minutes to get through this all but i'll try to be quick about it so give it a listen Tell me if make sure that I can uh, hear you or that you guys can hear this okay. This is Pastor Robin Bullock. If you're unfamiliar, he likes to a little bit quiet. I can amplify it on my end, but it's going to sound weird between the two, so I'll do my best. Vine prophecy. Testing, testing, one, two, three. It, wait, is it coming through both ears? Because it appears as though it's only coming through one ear for you guys. Are you hearing my voice through both headphones, through both ears? Testing, Thank testing, God. one, two, three. That's roughly equalized, give or take. Uh, let me check the Super Chats. Love your channel. I start my first ever job on the 7th. It's at a daycare. Well, congratulations, Ray Ray. That's awesome news, and thank you so much. Fat Squid, uh, thank you for the Super Chat. Yours truly the number one pony. Hannah thought it would have been desperate to ask for an interview from you or something. I think it's time to ask here again. Oh, okay. I appreciate that. I think I may follow Hannah on Twitter. Uh, but I'll tell you what. I'm going to follow Hannah on Twitter right now. And if Hannah wants to ask me... Hang on. I think it's Hannah Reloaded, right? Yeah. I'm following. Yeah, I am. I'm following. Uh, Hannah is welcome to send me a message. Uh, I can't send a message right now because I'm streaming, of course. But yeah, uh, or maybe I'll, maybe I'll send a message in a little while. But uh, thank you for that. I appreciate it. Uh, Urban Mask. It's, it's crazy. He would try to call you out and not the Looney Tunes in their own circles, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, it sounds to me like that's what he's about to do is call out the Looney Tunes. So we'll see how it goes. I only watched part of this, so it's going to be pretty interesting. Um, both? I'm in both? Yes, both ears. Okay, good. Just making sure. I appreciate that. How are all my fellow bots doing today? Exactly. Welcome to Gay Agenda. Yeah, bots only here. This is the bots only chat. <laughs> Do you use OBS? You can use a compressor plugin for sources. No, I don't use OBS. I use vMix. Very complicated program. Um, but yeah, uh, it has plugins and stuff too. I should probably work on that, but I don't know. Anyway, all right, let's keep listening. You can hear this okay. This is Pastor Robin Bullock. If you're unfamiliar, he likes to divine prophecy from God from cultural events. Now, let me show you what I mean by that. Watch this clip. It came out early April 2022. <laughs> I wow, City Rail Dude, thank you so much. I appreciate the super chat. I got to just jump in and, and mention. I know this is irrelevant, but just want you to know how bad the Chinese government is. Nazi-style genocide in Xin Xinjiang. Nazi-style concentration camps, evil social credit score, slave labor, compulsory organ harvesting, and actively supporting Russia and lying about it. I know. 100% uh, agree. It's not good. It is extremely ugly, and I wish that there was something that we could do from the U.S. I, you know, unfortunately, there isn't much we can do, uh, but at least we can, like, draw attention to it. So, I mean, that's something, right? Better than nothing, I suppose. Anyway, let's keep listening. Uh, thank you so much for the super chat on that. I think it perfectly explains exactly what I mean. And then the final prophecy about the slap was you who filed petitions and tried to make my prophets apologize. You are like Zedekiah who slapped Micaiah across the mouth. You said a lot of talk about slapping, right? Slap. I think what Robin Bullock was talking about there was a verse from Second Kings. Um, 
fucked up. Anyway, yeah, it was just like some event where somebody got slapped in the Bible, right? And uh, I'll cut to the chase. Uh, he was basically like this is right around the time when Will Smith slapped Chris Rock and like at the Oscars, you know, and um, Robin Bullock took that as like a sign of a prophecy that God was something, something, something. It was a prophecy being fulfilled that Will Smith slapped Chris Rock. What does he mean by slaps? He said, when you go, and it just said, when you go into your inner chamber, you will see it. And that night, everyone went home, watched those Oscars, and saw it. Yep. He is prophesying from God that God sent him a message when he watched the Will Smith, Chris Rock Oscars slap. He divined prophecy from Will Smith slapping Chris Rock at the Oscars. That's who this guy is. Then he talks about this. It said, you will, will see it. And it was a man named Will who did it. Does it just, does it get more ridiculous than this, honestly? Like, come on, dude, come on. It is so blatantly obvious that Robin Bullock is full of it. But people believe it. People buy it. They think that he really does speak to God. It's embarrassing. All right, so that, that's the first clip. I'm going to come over here and make sure I'll pause that. We're going to talk about this. So um, uh, let me see, making sure you guys can hear me. Okay, so what you just saw... Uh, this atheist playing a clip from Robin Bullock, who said that he had actually received a word from God having to do with the Will Smith slap of Chris Rock at last year's Oscars. And, and, and again, it's ludicrous. And you can see the, the, uh, the atheist host, I think his name is Owen. I want to be respectful, um, and we'll get into that in a little bit, too. Appreciate that. The atheist host, if you look close enough, he was giddy. He was actually giddy with laughter. He had to, he had to look like he had to refrain himself. And he said, yep, this is who this guy is. Here is a man standing in a leather jacket and a hair scrunchie saying that he got a prophecy from God uh, telling pretty much all Robin Bullock's, telling his listeners, uh, I guess the prophecy was, that God's saying, go home and watch the Oscars because I'm going to show you a sign having to do with a slap that's going to be somehow metaphorically demonstrating what I think of those who called out the prophets for falsely prophesying Donald Trump. Uh, one more thing about this guy's views. Uh, one of the criticisms that he has for Robin Bullock, you heard him say it a second ago, it may have slipped right by you. He said, this guy is sitting there wearing a hair scrunchie. Um, he criticizes Robin Bullock for having long hair and and wearing like a, a a thing in the back that makes him you know that makes him look like this guy's sister he mentioned in another part from the 80s i don't think it's a fair criticism honestly you can say he doesn't look christ like wearing all the black and everything else and and i would be okay with that but i don't really see a problem with anybody wearing like long hair or whatever like i don't see a problem with people looking less manly or more manly or whatever not really my thing um i don't feel like it's a fair complaint that's just me and he gave the he gave the uh example of zedekiah slapping mike i mike Haya, and that was of course in the book of first kings which ironically we're going to be reading tonight um and it's ridiculous it, it is unhinged ridiculous that's my word <laughs> i say the exact same thing that somehow the living god is not, is not telling you go read your bible study to show thyself approved witness the gospel street preach have a bible study share your testimony get online and and do a bible study so nothing like that he's what 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 robin bullock is telling you 
is that God says, hey, have you, hey, hey, make sure you watch the Oscars, folks, because I'm going to razzle-dazzle you something here. Right. Watch the Oscars where the world's greatest narcissists converge onto a single point and give, e war give awards to each other for whoever they think pretended the best on film. And the best pretender for a drama film goes to George Clooney. And they're all narcissistic, egomaniacs. But God wants you to watch that. See, see the absolute insanity of this. Could not agree more, dude. This guy is so on point. I love it. And here, so now through the eyes of an atheist, is it hard for him to do this? No, it's, it's, th this, this is like, the false prophets have become so unhinged and quite frankly, so unbiblical and unholy. And again, to think that God is the one telling you to watch the Oscars. It's just crazy. And so these, these atheists just have a, have a great time doing this. And again, the damage that is being done. Because I don't think I'm the one doing damage, honestly. I really don't. To Christianity, uh, I think it's the extremists that are doing the damage. I'm just standing here pointing at it. That's it. I don't f feel for a second that... I am responsible for doing any kind of damage to Christianity whatsoever. Um, I mean, you know, I've criticized Christianity before on my channel plenty of times. Uh, not not just extremism. I have cr criticized Christianity before specifically. But uh, lately, most recently, I've been heavily focusing on extremism. And um, in the past couple of years, I'd say. And boy, I got to tell you, it is easy. It is it is an easy job to find extremists because they're everywhere. There are so many Christian extremists out there right now. It's hard to find basically every Christian out there right now that's like in the public or whatever, public facing YouTuber, Christian YouTubers or whatever. They're almost all extremists. If they're not an extremist Christian, they're probably not on YouTube screaming about stuff. So every single person I come across is just a complete wing nut. As, try to imagine as I, as I go back to, because we're going to watch the next clip, and this particular video has 61,000 views on it. And again, 345,000 subscribers, a vast audience watching this foolishness. And it is foolishness. Robin Bullock does not speak for the living God. It is ridiculous and sad. And so we'll, we'll get into more of the damage part later. Uh, I'm going to find the next part uh, because this is cringe also. And, and I don't have this queued up. I'm kind of winging it tonight, so uh, bear with me. But listen to this next one. Let me make sure I've got the screen split. Here we go. Joe Biden was inaugurated. Uh, by the way, I want to preface this with, for any of the haters that are listening, um, I'm not here to argue about a stolen election. I, I, just bear with me here, please. I know, I know you want to watch this clip, but please just hear me because I've got to head, head this off before it comes. I'm not here to argue a stolen election. What I'm here to argue or actually stand against are the false prophets. Was the election stolen? I don't know. It doesn't even matter. I'm not here. I, I get the impression that he believes that it was stolen, first of all. Uh, and second, it wasn't, by the by. And second, uh, later on, he says that he voted for Donald Trump for his economic policies, not because he's like a f uh, religious figure like Robin Bullock did or whatever. Um, that's, you know, I, I have a problem with that. Like the election wasn't stolen and he's voting for the party that is doing everything that they can to destroy the country, to destroy everything. It is 
concerning on entirely new levels. Like, I just don't feel like at this point, I don't, after everything that we've seen politically, Trump trying to, you know, destroy democracy, effectively becoming a, a new messiah for these people and everything, I don't see how anybody, especially Christians, could ever justify voting for Donald Trump at this point. I just don't see it. I don't know how you do that. Uh, let's see. Poofy, he he's helping grow your channel. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you for the super chat. City of Rail Dude, is he serious? Is he suggesting that Will Smith is the only person who's slapped anyone in the past 2,000 years? Um, or is his point dumber than that? Uh, Robin Bullock? Oh, yeah. He's 100% dead serious. He really does deeply to the bottom of his heart think that uh, Will Smith slapping Chris Rock at the Oscars was a sign from God, a sign from on high that something, something, something that I don't know. Uh, I, I'm not even sure. Oh, my God, dude. I'm really sucking at this level. I'm not even sure what he was prophesying. Uh, something about Trump was going to win the election, I'm sure, or is going to be reinstalled in the election. To argue that. what? Oh, yeah. Oh, one more thing. Chandler Sleziak, thank you for becoming a member. And also, Brad Dubay, either one religion is correct or none of them. Um, yeah, that's true, I guess. Yeah, I, I I, guess you could say pretty much all religions, or many at the very least, are mutually exclusive, right? Islam and Christianity cannot be true simultaneously. That is impossible. Uh, because they are so contradictory. Uh, hell, I mean, even Catholicism and evangelicalism can't be true simultaneously uh, because they contradict each other, you know, uh, heavily. So anyway, uh, thank you for the super chat on that. I appreciate it. Let's keep listening. I want people to do is love Jesus Christ with all their heart, soul, mind, and all their strength. I don't care about... Gay. No, I'm just kidding. ...an alleged stolen election. I know that's part of what you've made your foundation of faith in. The, they, they say things like, well, the prophets weren't wrong because the election was stolen. So I'll answer this again for you. So you don't need to, to put in the comment section below, touch not mine anointed and do my prophets. No harm. You're in big trouble, Drew. Stop it. Just stop. If the election was stolen... Why wasn't that the prophecy? See how this works when you use that last brain cell in your head. Why wasn't that the prophecy? You know, when I heard this point the first time, I was actually really impressed by this point. I really respect the point that he just made, you know? Um, there are like a billion examples of God getting involved in like the political happenings in ancient Israel, right? Uh, That's basically all he did in the Bible. And he was pretty specific with many of his prophecies. You know, God was, right? If, if this really was a prophecy that Trump was going to win the election, why didn't they include the part about Trump, like, having it stolen from him, if that really is true, if they really did receive this information or whatever? Why didn't, why wasn't that part of the prophecy? That is truly ridiculous. And I'm going to just yoink that point from you there, Drew. I appreciate that. that. That's really, that's an interesting one. Because I'll tell you what, that, you know, here first, the prophecy should have then been, thus saith the Lord, Donald Trump will win the prophecy, but it will be stolen by crooks and thieves. And as a result... Even though Joe Biden didn't win, he will be falsely inaugurated as the next president. And there'll be a big controversy, thus saith the Lord. Why wasn't that the prophecy? But Honestly, absolutely on point. All these prophets sat around the oh, <laughs> I'm Hank Kuhneman. Oh, the Lord says. Trump's going to win in a landslide. Oh, please. Joe Biden doesn't have a chance. And that's what they did. It is. It is. It is actually exactly what they did. They said those words, you know. They they said that stuff like nonstop for months and months and months. And 
when Biden won the election, they made up some nonsense about how it was secretly, you know, this is actually a prophecy fulfilled. It's just Biden came in and overturned a prophecy. All kinds of crazy stuff, dude. It was absolutely nuts. Oh, my God. I can't believe I did that just now. And they all did it and they know it. Now, the other half of this and the other tragic part, listen very closely. When it comes to a prophecy, there are, when you're talking about a prophet and God, there's two parties involved in a prophecy. Prophet and God. If the prophet wasn't wrong, then who was? Someone was wrong, clearly. Who was? All the prophets said, we're not apologizing anymore. We didn't get it wrong. Remember when Hank Kuhneman was doing his, and you, remember how dramatic he was, right? But if the prophet wasn't wrong, then who was wrong? Well, this is the additionally evil part of this. Because the prophets refused to apologize, refused to confess and admit that it was a false prophecy. They refuse to repent they leave God holding all the blame. Now, they won't say this directly or even indirectly, but it's implied. And you know exactly that that's the truth. That somehow, you know, God woke up oh, on Wednesday morning and he grabbed the newspaper and he's like, what the heck? What? Biden won? I like this. This is actually pretty funny. This is on point. I'm a fan. Although I got to say, Drew, uh, I deeply, deeply disagree with you on some points uh, politically. Uh, glad that you're one of the Christians that are out here fighting this extremism. I really appreciate that about you, like, a lot. I really like that. Um, I just wish that you could see that Donald Trump is just absolutely toxic, first of all. The election was not stolen. It was one of the most secure elections in U.S. history. Second. And third, if the economy is what you really care about, the economy has consistently performed better under Democrats than under Republicans since, I don't know how long, like a long, long time, forever. Since the party switch back in the 1960s slash 70s, at least. Oh my goodness, what? How did this happen? I'm, I've been blindsided. That's what they're saying. And hence their continued narrative of, you know, God's going to correct the stolen election. It was stolen. No. Again, we talk about it all the time as though God didn't know. This is ridiculous. And so this is why this is just added ammunition to these atheists. So now with that said, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to play this clip. Listen to the next clip. As president, Robin Bullock comes in and says this. Listen to this. Don't be concerned about riots. Oh, wait, let me fast riots forward a little bit. Riots are going to happen whether you come back I'll let or this not. play. He wants Donald Trump to come back. I mean, now, not in 2024, now. He wants Trump to take back the presidency immediately before the next election. And he has a plan for that, and I'll explain what his plan is in a second. Keep listening. They're going to happen whether uh, Donald Trump runs for president or is president or walks in the office. The riots are going to happen anyway. Don't worry. So this part, this is where Robin Bullock is slyly or, or coyly basically telling Donald Trump or hoping that Trump is listening, which of course he's not. Like, why would Trump listen to this dude? Anyway. He's coyly telling Trump that he want he wants him to walk back into office, just walk into the Oval Office and sit down, and God will push things out of the way for him. That was his claim. Uh, just walk in, and you know the Secret Service members who try to prevent him from coming in will just suddenly up and have a heart attack right there on the spot. Um, he's just going to push things out of the way for Donald Trump to be president just like that instantly. That's what Trump or that's what uh, Robin Bullock is trying to say to Trump right now. That's a message he's trying to deliver to him. That's nuts, dude. That is nuts. I had a big sister growing up in the 70s and 80s who wore her hair exactly like this. 
little frilly bangs in the front, and then a hair scrunchie in the back. Just thought I'd mention that. All of that. Again, I don't really care. I, I don't feel like this, you know, you're, you're not masculine enough thing is really productive, but you do you, I suppose. Operate in the power of God and let him pave your way. One step toward that, your position, and God will open the way all the way back. And watch this. And I'm going to tell the president something. Donald John Trump, you were anointed from the day you were born to be president. Dude, this is so deeply cringy. I can't stand it. And you were brought uh, on the scene for such a time as this. Uh, that is just too much. It is simply too much. I cannot. <laughs> this guy is actually pretty funny. Appreciate that. <laughs> but look, and, and again, I'll say this about atheists. I would rather be having a chance to debate theology, biblical verses, chapters, and books with an atheist than having this added circus silliness that now where the atheists lump us all together. So again, why am I showing you this? Because we're looking at this in lieu of what the atheists see. Now, there is no... You'll notice throughout all this, if you watch this video in these clips, the, the, the atheist here, or atheist host, Owen, he's not uh, challenging Robin Bullock on his theology or his doctrine. There are, you know, there are atheists out there on YouTube that do that. Um, a lot, actually. I just, it's not really my wheelhouse. And I feel like I'm trying to kind of create a movement more than simply entertain uh I know, obviously entertainment is like a, a part of it but i would really rather create a movement out of this and i feel like if i if i'm gonna try to accomplish anything at all i'm not going to be able to without having christians on board with me it's not going to work it, it the movement is simply too small i just tried to spin jump with the uh the R button by accident. I forgot it's it's the A button. Or anything biblical. He's mocking this false prophet for his false prophecies. So it's it's shifted away and virtually no biblical uh, theology is being challenged. It's all about Trump. Think of, let that let that sink in. And by the way, this is a, a, a great majority of it is of his videos he does this because the circus has come to town. And and so you're like, well, yeah, but wow, that doesn't make it. Well, it's because a lot of the atheists, the, see, the the difference is the atheists will work to, to mock these in order that you may stay away from Christianity altogether because they lump all this as Christianity, or at least it's perceived that way by the... Well, I mean, ideally, I wouldn't, you know, nobody would be religious in general. I think it's objectively... I think I can say it's objectively better to believe only true things and as few false things as possible, right? That is objectively the case, it seems to me. It is preferable to believe as many true things and as few false things as possible. And as far as I can tell, you know, Christianity has not been proven to me to be true. Uh, so a, a lot of the beliefs that people have about it strike me as false. And under, w with those premises in mind, it's preferable to me that people were not Christian. Now, if you are, I'm really okay with that. That's perfectly fine with me, honestly. Um, that, that's just the, like the perspective that I, that I take on this subject the followers and the listeners of the atheist. Now, when true Christians come up and mock the false prophets, it's, it's in order to steer you back into Christ, into the true doctrine as found in Holy Scripture. This is the difference. We, we love Jesus. We believe in Jesus, uh, true Christians. We want the followers to awaken and come back into the truth of Jesus Christ, to serve him. Well, you know, if somebody calls themselves a Christian, then they're a Christian as far as I'm concerned. 
Um, this is the no true Scotsman fallacy. You know, a Christian is a, a category and it's a self-assigned label. So if somebody wants to call themselves a Christian, then that's just what they are, period. That's that's it. They are Christian. Now, I, I get that you're... That I get that you want to call them, you know, false Christians or whatever, and I'm willing to accept that because what they're doing is actually against the Bible. It is actually blasphemous. Like, it is unbiblical for them to prophesy about God, you know, saying that he gave them all this information and everything else, where in reality, they absolutely did not get this information from God, very obviously. And according to the Bible, they should be punished for that. They should be like, they should get in trouble. They should, well, it, it says they should be stoned, but I you know, obviously I don't stand for that. Um, at the very least, they should lose their pastorship or their congregation or whatever. So I, it's fair to call them, at the very least, blasphemous Christians um, and false prophets, totally fair. But saying that they're not Christians, I, I, I don't feel that's 100% fair. And truth and sincerity and sober-mindedness. But these atheists, they want you to stay, and they, so what happens is they wind up lumping it all together, and so now you've got hundreds of thousands and millions who see this nonsense, and they think all Christians are like that. But let me, uh, I'm going to play this again. On, uh, on the scene for such a time as this. Cringy. I can't stand it. And you were brought uh, on the scene for such a time as this uh that is and so here you've got robin bullocks telling he so in this particular clip in this particular clip he's addressing donald trump as though it was god speaking and he's saying donald john trump you were born for this purpose to be president and you were brought on this time for such, or you were brought uh, for such a time as this. So what he's doing is he's almost attributing to Donald Trump messianic-like attributes. Oh, he absolutely is. Yes, a hundred percent. He's definitely attributing messianic attributes. I.e., he's comparing Trump to Jesus, or he is asking Trump to like act as Jesus or, or thinks that he is Jesus or whatever else. A hundred percent. And, and I, and I do, you can see as, as, uh, let me see. As Robin Bullock <laughs> stares lovingly into the camera, he's, he's just wishing that he can meet Donald Trump. But, but the way that he describes Donald Trump is, is really almost messianic. That, and, and you've heard many say it. I know there's a new video out today where they got him, uh, got, uh, Robin Bullock saying that uh, that uh, Donald Trump is God's new David. Which yeah, this is an older video of mine that I did. Um, yeah, he, I, I put out a, a new video like, dude, where am I supposed to be going right now? I think that I messed this level up. Anyways, uh, the video he's talking about had just come out like the day that that he uh he did this whole thing which is as far as i'm concerned blasphemy david loved god was david perfect no we know all about uh, the you know the deal with bathsheba and, and uh uriah the hittite and everything all the bad thing but god uh, as he described david uh served the lord with all his heart from beginning to end right he had his problems but this is where Solomon got in trouble because at the end of Solomon's life, and I know I'm getting way off track, but anyway, to, to call Donald Trump a David is, is I, I, don't, I guess I wouldn't go as far as to say it's blasphemy. It's just deeply, deeply insulting to God. Donald Trump could care less about God Almighty, right? He, he doesn't even know the Bibles of the book. This guy is an opportunist. Um, again, what if I, I, I did vote for him? Well, cause he's, you know, he run the economy. Great. Not really. He did a normal job of running the economy. He ran it just like any other Republican would have because 
guess what? This is one of the areas in which Donald Trump recognized he doesn't really know what he's doing, and he deferred to people who did. Uh, and as a result, he ran it okay. He ran it normal, you know, decent. Uh, that wasn't Donald Trump's doing. That was the staff members around him. I mean, I guess you can credit Donald Trump with listening to his staff members. Whatever. Okay, great. Let's take a look at Super Chats. Emily Christina, check out Brenda on God is Gray and Reverend Ed Trevor's YouTube channels. Both are progressive Christians. They have common sense and don't believe conspiracy theories. Well, that's a plus. I'm glad. Um, I, I, I'm glad to know that there are reasonable Christians out there. But you know how many subbies they have? Let's find out. Brenda on... Oh, God is Gray. You know what? I know God is Gray. I, I know of God is Gray. God is Gray has... Oh, wow. Actually, 139,000 subbies. That's bigger than I thought it was. Okay. You know how many listeners Greg Locke has? I mean, he's got somewhere around 100k subbies because that's, you know, he's been throttled by the algorithm a few times and banned from YouTube and Twitter and a bunch of other places, but he's got millions of listeners. They've got 139,000. Greg Locke, uh, Kenneth Copeland. I mean, Kenneth Copeland has an entire, uh, like, what do you call it? Like, TV network behind him. You know, the loud extremists have the most reach. And by and large, that, that's true in many movements, not just the Christian movement. But that's why I talk about it, you know? That's why I got to talk about it. Anyway, thanks for the super chat. My mind went AWOL 06. Given that your experience with other YouTubers, I understand why you don't do collabs anymore. But what about this pastor? Why not? Because uh, he's still a Trump supporter and he's still an election denier. And there's a lot that, you know, isn't really great about the way that he views the world, aside from, like, you know, the, the Christianity stuff. He seems reasonable in a lot of ways, but I think in some key ways he's not. Um, and aside from that, I just don't do collabs. <laughs> like, you know, other YouTubers aside or problems or clicks or whatever other thing aside, I'm just not really a fan of collabing because it takes a lot of, energy and work and planning and it's difficult and also i'm very um introverted and don't really like talking to and working with other people very much because it's stressful generally speaking all general generalizations are false i i like that yeah it's a paradox isn't it is that a paradox um it is a generalization in itself that statement is but it's true so that makes it false uh, anyway kind of interesting i appreciate that uh that super chat Oop. journal of the wandering soul thank you for becoming a member and denny from charleston sc thank you for the uh the little emoji i appreciate it by the by i'm not going to be able to finish this tonight obviously it's getting a little bit longer but if you want to see me finish this tomorrow uh, I'll be doing it tomorrow morning, 11 a.m. on my unfiltered channel, and I will put a link to that live stream in the description of this live stream. Matter of fact, let me just go grab it real quick while I'm thinking about it. I'll just go grab a link to it right now. It is... Um... Okay, cool. Um, upcoming, I believe that this is it. I'm going to post it in the chat and I'm also going to edit the description right now and put it in here. If you guys want to see, um, yeah, it'll be up there. Anyway, it's in the description now. Anyway, yeah, thank you so much for the super chats and stuff, guys. Let's keep listening. You did a great job running the economy, but the, the way that... No, he didn't. These profits have set him into almost a messianic role. And quite frankly, I think as days progress, it, it's more and more closer and closer. They are, they are, there's a, some that actually are off the hinges even more. But it is disturbing. And, and our host, 
our atheist host in this clip, Owen, he's right. It is absolutely cringy. And it's embarrassing. And if so, again, if you are an atheist watching this, if you are a non-believer watching this, and even if Owen is watching this, this is not Christian. Robin Bullock does not represent true Christianity. Well, I think he represents a segment of Christianity in the United States right now. And what's more, he represents a large segment of Christianity. I... I I, I will allow the qualifier that it's not all Christianity. There is some moderate Christianity that's not full of nutter butters, that's reasonable, and that you know people really like and appreciate and can enjoy. Um, and if you're going to be a Christian, I would prefer that you're that type of Christian, the type that isn't a nutter butter, basically. Um, but unfortunately, it is a large subset right now. That is something that we as a society have to grapple with. We have to. Uh, so, anyway. He has gone off the rails into a fantasy world of narcissistic, vain imaginations. Uh, true Christians follow Christ biblically according to the word of God. And so... Please, if you're one of these that were considering Christianity and then you're seeing Robin Bullock, a.k.a. Billy Ray Cyrus with a hair scrunchie, do not think that this is Christianity. It is not. Somebody said, I, I very intentionally do not use nicknames for people. Uh, that It's propagandistic. It's not good. Um, so I, I just don't use nicknames. Like I used to call somebody Pastor Buckaroo, I think. Andrew Womack. I just don't do it anymore. But uh, somebody did give me a nickname for Robin Bullock, and it was Silly Ray Cyrus. And I, I can appreciate that, but I'm not going to encourage it because, again, it's preferable to not use nicknames. It's propagandistic. This is wing nut anity. Wing nut anity. Okay? So there you go on that particular. And we're we're going to. Take, uh, Does wingnut anity have anything to do with Sean Hannity from Fox News? Uh, another uh, clip here as we go on. I think I'm, I'm going to try to feel this out. I'm not sure if this is it. Anything. Is it his will? Yes. Is he the president? Yes. That's why he could just walk right back in. And God will supernaturally move. All right, listen to this one. That what he was saying right there just now... Uh, God, now I keep wanting to call him Billy Ray Cyrus. What Robin Bullock was saying just now was that Donald Trump could walk into the White House and God would supernaturally push things out of the way. Like the secret or the secret service agents that, you know, tried to stop him at the door would suddenly have heart attacks and stuff. That kind of thing. That's nuts. This clip comes out and he's still complaining about it. People are sick of it at this point. Some of them. Or he feels like they are. So he comes out on stage and gets on him about it. Listen to this. Apologize. Go ahead and apologize. Well, no. How about that? Just so you can hear me again. No. Because you are wrong. If this had no meaning to it and no prophet standing speaking today was, <coughs> if they were all wrong. That was a really weird cough out of the middle of nowhere, right? It sounded like a fake cough, like he forgot what he was saying, but decided to like cough to try to cover that up. I don't know. Why don't it go away? Because they can't accept the fact that they were wrong, because if they do accept that fact, then it means they have to give up their church. In fact, the Bible says that they're supposed to be stoned if they're wrong about prophecy. Now, this guy is one of those people who claimed to prophesy that Donald Trump is going to be the president in 2021. He's going to be re-inaugurated. And here we sit with, with a Biden presidency. That's why it doesn't go away. Because if it goes away, he loses everything. I feel that's pretty obvious. I don't even need to say it. But for some reason, this guy can't let it go. Some unknown reason. How come it hasn't ever faded away? 
How come it's still a fight over that election? It's it's not a fight. It's only a fight in this guy's head, honestly. If it was wrong and it wasn't true, then why are we still debating all of this? No one's debating this. We have the facts. The fact. Right. And so I won't again, I'm not trying to get into the election fraud, but I'm, I'm going to go ahead at this point and disagree with our atheist host here. Now, what he said uh, at the beginning of this clip was that if people like Robin Bullock were to come forth and confess that it was a false prophecy, you know, the Trump election, that it was false and they apologized and so on and so forth, um, the atheist host said that they pretty much stand to lose everything. This, I love that I'm the atheist host, right? <laughs> Not Owen, but the atheist host. I'll take it, I suppose. This world disagree, sadly, uh, with the our atheist host here, Owen, because these false prophets wouldn't lose anything. They haven't lost anything. Because you know, I've thought about this a little bit more since I saw this the other day for the first time. I think I agree with him, honestly. I do. I think I agree. They wouldn't lose anything if they if they just like walked away from it and just stopped talking about the election fraud or whatever. I think he's right. Uh, this is not even close to Robin Bullock's first failed prophecy. Uh, not even his biggest and well, maybe his biggest and most famous. But, you know, he's had plenty of others. He's had plenty of others. And the dude hasn't lost a single follower to it, presumably. I mean, he's still as big as he ever was. So I think after giving it more consideration, I think uh, Drew Bloom is correct on this point. Deep down inside, the, the followers know that the false prophets are false. And even if they came and said, you know, it was a false prophet, uh, I apologize, I didn't hear from God, not only would these false prophets not lose a thing, they would actually rise, they would thrive, and they would gain followers, and they would gain monetary, uh, you know, way, uh, monetary payments, gifts, all that stuff. Uh, and sadly, that is the reality, because we've seen this. We already see this happening. We've seen, for example, with Amanda Grace, I did a video where... I haven't covered Amanda Grace much, but oh my God, is she interesting. Seriously. She is one of the supposed prophets. It's like super, super influential and famous in the prophetic world or whatever. Um, I, I should really cover her more. I have the opportunity. Maybe I'll do that tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow morning. We'll see. I 100% showed you how she out and outright lied about a protein strand. She came out and prophesied that a new protein strand was going to be discovered. And I showed you how number one, uh, she came on, I'm sorry, let me finish. She came on with a, a video a couple of days later that said prophecy fulfilled. And she did this thing where she was big what to do, where she was uh, patting herself in the back saying that here's a prophecy fulfilled. I went in and I did a video and exposed this for the apps one of one of the greatest exposures, I guess very plainly showing that she absolutely lied about this. There was no new protein. She she was reading the news. She read an article about a new protein strand. She didn't bother to, to finish reading the article, where in essence what it was, it wasn't a new protein strand discovered. It was a new use for a protein strand that had existed, that had been discovered for some 20 years already. But she, because she was so adamant on lying to her followers and to prop herself up as a prophet, she found a little story that she was gonna to try to capitalize on. It was also one of those where she said, oh, the Lord gave me this prophecy two days ago, but she didn't post it till two days later. The article was, uh, after a previous, anyway, it, it, she couldn't have, she didn't post it on the day the article came out that day. And, but she, she said she got the prophecy two days before it, but she didn't. She was reading the news, then she posted it. Now, I exposed this. It, it's one of the greatest, most 
clear cut examples of, of one of these prophets lying. Not only did her followers not care, she gained, she continues to thrive and gain followers. You know why? Because here's why. It's all about entertainment. It's all about entertainment. It's like Gladiator. Remember Russell Crowe? Are you not entertained? Fair enough. Fair enough. You know, I think I agree with him here. I think he's right. Uh, I, I do. I think it's all about entertainment with these false prophets. Um, and I think he's right that they wouldn't lose a single follower, basically. Savages? They want to see the kill. They want to see the sport. These followers are being entertained. So it doesn't matter if the prophets are wrong or right. The important thing is, is that you put on a good show. Put on some good theater. See some good costumes. Put that head covering on. She's holy. And then get into it. Now, I've got to tell you. Look, I'm shaking. I'm still shaking. I, this word came to me last night at 4.35 in the morning. Why is it always in the morning? Like, I was sleeping, and boom, the Lord smacked me. Gave me this new word. That's how important it was. He didn't give it to me while I was drinking coffee the next morning and eating my Fruit Loops. That's funny. <laughs> Has to be in the morning. I digress. But this is what it is. So, playing that clip, again, this is what the atheists see. A goofball clown show under the big top circus tent. And it's sad. Because followers are be the followers think, you know, or potential followers and the lost, they see this and they think, oh, this is Christianity? These guys are a joke. It's an absolute joke. So what is this? This speaks to the damage, the damage that these false prophets continue to do. It is a damage ministry. Absolutely agree. Kenneth Copeland is one of the biggest perpetrators of this whole thing where he's just doing like absolutely insane damage to the reputation of Christianity. Absolutely nuts. Like everybody knows that the guy is lying about this stuff, blatantly lying about it. Like you can't go to one of his services or watch it or whatever without plainly seeing that he's completely lying about all of this. But you know what he's doing in the process of lying about it? Gaining political power. Gaining political power by inextricably linking religion and politics together the way that he does. Um, ab absolutely disgusting, honestly. Absolutely disgusting. Anyway, uh, let's take a look at Super Chats here. Journal of the Wandering Soul. Your voice, one of the first that really... <clears throat> sorry. One of the first to really break through my brainwashing. Like my wake-up moment. Thank you for doing these videos. They mean a lot. Well, I appreciate that. I'm glad that I could help in some small way. And I'm glad you like my stuff. That is awesome. John D., thank you so much for the super chat. Uh, that That's the shit. You did not have to do that. So thank, thank you, everybody, who came and uh, sent super chats. Especially City Rail Dude. Thank you for the $100 super chat. And everybody else. And all of the members. Thanks to the members. The new members. Anyway, I'll tell you what. Uh, I'm going to get out of here. If you guys want to see part two to this, be here tomorrow morning, um, 11 a.m. So if you're watching this within, uh, within 12 hours of it coming out, it's going to be 11 a.m. If you're watching it past that, it's already come out. So, yeah, 11 a.m. on my unfiltered channel. I'll be live streaming also on Twitch simultaneously. So, um, anyway, yeah, thank you guys so much for coming and hanging out. It's been fun. I will get off here and talk to you guys hopefully tomorrow morning. All right, have a good one, guys.
If you like what I do and you want to make sure I can continue to do it, you can support me in a few ways. First, you can support me on Patreon. That's probably the best way. But if you want to get something back for your support, you can check out my Teespring. I sell all kinds of shirts and stickers and stuff on there. Second, you can support me by checking out my Etsy store. I sell 3D printed stands for every system from the original Nintendo to the Xbox One. And finally, if you want to support me in other ways, you can check me out on my other channels. I have the podcast channel, which is where I talk about whatever's on my mind. Politics, social issues, whatever. You can also find it everywhere podcasts can be found. Or you can check out the videos on my main channel where I focus on destructive cults. As it is with most channels these days, I rely on the support of viewers like you to keep my channel alive, so sharing my work is extremely helpful. Anyways, check me out in all those places if you haven't already. Thanks for listening, guys.